Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. It's another episode of Vibing with Crypto or Vibing in Crypto. Uh, with you guys, myself, Vibing, got my brother with me, Mr. Scott Tripp, aka the Crypto Beast. As you guys know, we're some of the admins over here at Asia Blockcast. Scott also handles social media side of things. Uh, this is kind of more of our new segment that we like to kind of, um, you know, be a little bit more. Um, free spirited in a sense of, of expressing our opinions about some of the uh, topics that we see in crypto um and today like no other day there's more mischief going on in in crypto and and we're going to talk about a little bit of it um but before we get into that today um i'm gonna let scott uh you know formally introduce himself uh and and then uh we'll kind of get into today's topic but as, uh guys we appreciate you guys uh viewing the video make sure you like comment subscribe down below uh let us know what you guys think about some of the topics as you guys know this is always our controversial section uh so it's a little bit more freestyle so um scott you could take over and then we'll jump right into it for sure so we're going to start the conversation off right at the well i mean not at the very beginning we won't start off with uh the coin exchange but we'll start off with wonderland uh, Wonderland was a project that I seen probably a few months ago that was advertising itself all over the place. People were falling in love with it. It's an AVEX um, token or on the AVEX chain. And they uh, promised this huge uh, APY of over a thousand percent on the token. And people were jumping in left, right and center, watching the TikTok videos. People were like, this is not financial advice. This could be a scam this could be something but i mean i'm gonna put my money in there anyways and a lot of people invest in it just because of the high rate of return on the tokens that were in there i mean it was over extended period of time that they're giving the thousand percent but just recently within the last two days of price uh definitely looked like it rugged it went down almost 95 percent um and there's a lot of questions going on at that time from different people and now it's gotten even deeper uh, with the treasurer, um, a man by the name of, I'll just say it really quickly, while his, he's got a few names, but the name that he's going by currently right now is Michael Patreon. Um, and he was a treasurer and he's been recently voted to be not the treasurer anymore because of this guy's uh, experience with Quadriga, uh, CX uh, exchange. And if anybody knows that, that was one of the biggest, I guess, almost in a way scams because the owner did die. The one that was tied in it with this gentleman um, died in India and there was over $250 million missing. Yeah, no, this has been a, a one of those topics that's uh, kind of been been um ongoing in the DeFi sector right where we can have uh, nefarious uh actors come in and portray uh another person and essentially uh start a, a business and become the ceo of a treasury um and and take advantage of it uh you know they could have a malicious past um and still be able to come into here and not even be evaluated uh to a high uh, to a certain extent um this does kind of open the door some for some kind of uh i don't i don't want to say regulation but legal action right where maybe like uh you know people have to either uh uphold or have a, a certain standard to be able to create within a DeFi space or to be uh you know the, the owner of a treasury or or things of that nature um but at the same time, Scott, it, it, you never, it's kind of hard to regulate something that they don't really understand all the way, right? So I, I don't know. I think that right now, the only thing they can do is probably try to get the FBI involved, uh, try to track down people that, that that uh, you know, uh, I don't like using the word scam, but scam at that, 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 that oh, nature wow. or at that, ne at that level and, and, and do something about it, right? But I, I, I mean, you know, for me, I, I almost think it would it, it would baffle me to think that these kind of people um, wouldn't know that they, there's some kind of loophole because 
they keep doing the same thing, Scott. So, I mean, even though he's had a, a, a reckless past, I know in 2005, he had a credit and uh, bank fraud problem. And in 2007, he, theft and burglary. And then, you know, the, the whole, the, the allegations um, um, with the, um, the Quadriga uh, coin exchange, um, there's been a lot of money, man, that, that they've been able to, you know, come up with i mean um you know michael patron or you know aka um omar dahani uh his personal wallet going from 45 million dollars to 450 million dollars so this is uh this is a lot of money um and it's definitely going to raise some some eyebrows uh within different exchange commissions uh and and different uh forms of government so i know the security and exchange commission is going to look at it sec is going to be like you know, this was almost a half a billion dollars. Um, <laughs> and and let's see what we can we can do to step in there. But again, I think this just kind of goes down to over over committing to mm, dead ends. I think sometimes that people know that it might be a dead end road but then just hold the accelerator down too long. I mean, this coin didn't start off with anything of any type of utility. Um, and to be able to come back and offer an APY or, of, of, you know, a thousand percent, um, Scott, we gotta, we gotta be real with ourselves, right? Like yeah. all these other digital yeah. currencies aren't, 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 um, aren't offering thousand APY because they're greedy. It, it's just, it's not, it's not really possible um, because it's all transaction based and volume based, right? So, um, I don't know. I I think you know, I I hope that people you know see this experience and and kind of think about it like, hey man, look, we gotta we gotta do just do better, man. Yeah. We just gotta do better. Well, even this, especially in the DeFi sector, man. Gosh. <laughs> well, and this guy even like it says here, like you mentioned that. Uh, 450 million dollars that went up by just shows here a crypto wallet identified belonging to patron appeared to be rapidly offloading various tokens on Thursday with its total net worth dropping from 450 million to 70 million in a matter of hours so this guy is washing his tokens as fast as possible to try and not get people to catch on to what he was doing and it's a common practice when it comes to hacks that we see the same thing we we're talking about that tornado faucet or whatever that just basically washes cryptocurrency when you want to get rid of it and makes it anonymous that's what this yeah, guy tornado proxy yeah is probably doing and i mean like his experience before so i don't know if you know but the colin that was part of that quadriga uh cx uh, crypto exchange he's a young guy he had um i forget what they call it uh it's a syndrome of the stomach uh crohn's disease crohn's, crohn's disease yeah and he he was uh in india and when he died apparently no uh actual autopsy on the body was done they said that they wouldn't accept the body at the one spot because it didn't die somewhere near there. There's a whole bunch of fishy stuff when it comes to the story of uh, Cotton as well. That's his name, last name Cotton. Um, he was a business partner of Michael Patron in that. And there's always that question of them laundering money somehow and him potentially disappearing. And nobody knows 100% if that might have happened or not. They, they, they say a lot of stuff, but... My one question is, he had access to that money too, that $250 million that went missing. How much of that money, because these guys were in partners in other uh, things together as well that have went south that were proven to be scams. They would be working together in these forums to actually like um, scam people out of their money. So uh, uh, Quadrigo was, was to resemble Continent Patrons previous collaboration Midas Gold, a service that enabled money laundering, taking percentage of each transactions. Quadrigo's corporate accounts did trades, tens of millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin, 
with accounts connected to Ponzi schemes and illegal marketplaces. So these guys have been in this market space for a while. Even the guy that died, like these are major fraudsters that have moved into the DeFi space and they're trying to vote to make a decision if this guy should be a part of Wonderland still. Give me a freaking break. Why would you allow the community to vote to let this guy stay in power or not when so, there should be so an investigation funny. into what he's doing? <laughs> so the funny thing is, I think they have a multi-sig wallet, right? Mm -hmm. And he's one of the signatures on the wallet. Um, and this yields a problem with the multi-sig wallet. And this is the first, I think this might be one of the first uh, experiences where you see the multi-sig wallet have a failure, right? Whereas if, Scott, if, if me and you are uh, one of the sig, uh, signers on the multi-sig wallet, but we have two other people that's multi-sig um, that, that are, uh, you know, people who can sign on the multi-sig wallet, but they're anon or they're anonymous. How does this, if me and this guy just decide to do some mischievous stuff because we're on back end tech development uh, and we know what's internal in the contract and we know how to manipulate that, how are the people that that whole multi sig? How can they do anything? Yeah, they can't. And who's they, to say the multi signature isn't a paid actor in what they're doing? You know what I mean? Like he's paid to provide his signature when that guy asks him to do it. Yeah. And there's so, some questions about this. Even that the one guy might be a paid actor for this uh, patron guy, which I mean to have a switch in names, to be charged with theft before. I mean, the police or the ser secret service, was it the, I'm just reading this. Uh, the talk old members began to debate whether patron might be in fact Omar Dahani, one of 28 suspects who's been arrested by the US secret service in a global string operation targeting an online marketplace for stolen credit card information and forged documents. Dahani, who was known for another message board, was an expert in washing funds and was arrested in South California, Southern California, where he's living with his family. So this guy, like super long history of defrauding people. And here we put him in power of DeFi. And then we have the government coming out with this emergency order all of a sudden to start regulating cryptocurrency. And my fear, is what just happened with Wonderland, if it isn't going to be a push to try and regulate the DeFi market. And I know your feelings on that, Vivian, but I just, I'm seriously, seriously starting to question if they might not be using this as a push to try and regulate it. And I hope they don't. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, there, there it, needs to be regulation. They can use, but, yeah. I, 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 I think, um, I think people just got to make smarter choices, man. I mean, Tell me, tell me, tell me any, any other than the um, Quadrica uh, coin exchange. Tell me anything uh, about this token that we're talking about now that had a utility, right? This is just like I said. People, the thing about DeFi, Scott, is man. I want to say this in the nicest way, right? The thing about DeFi, there's a lot of degen and there's a lot of new entry investors right and people just they over they over commit they they don't like if, if people expose their portfolio to DeFi, uh more than 10 percent of your portfolios in DeFi, then you're probably making a, a very high risk to, uh high reward decision but you also have to be ready for that um I, I think, you know, this this thing that they're doing right now, we hear stories about the Wild Wild West all the time and, and how, you know, Kill Bill was like the best gunslinger in, for 10 years. I mean, these guys haven't even been out of the year. Uh, they've been able to do some impressive things, uh, come up with a large sums of money, uh, find ways to, to, you know, clean this money. Um, probably uh get involved with some um higher financial powers that 
give them access to more money um, to help them clean it. I think that's a lot of that that's involved as well. And that's why you see so, a, a mass abundance of so many projects. But I'll always allude to, man, I just don't want a fucking 65 year old guy making the decisions for DeFi and for crypto. It, to me, it just, it's, it's not in my favor, man. I, I think that we can do better. I think that, you know, we can, we can hold people to a certain regulation, a regular, a regulatory standard, but not a governmental standard where they step in and tell you what to do with your digital assets. Here's the question. Are they trying to push this whole ethics on the world, not just themselves too? Like, I hope they don't think they can just rule all the cryptocurrency like it's theirs. So they need yeah. to tell everybody what to do. So I, in a, in a sense, outside of this topic, you know, I think uh, when we see these regulatory clarities come into uh, fruition in the next coming weeks <clears throat> or the next month, um, I think they'll target the big things. Um, you know why? Because it's the only thing they have time to study. They've had 10 years to study Bitcoin uh, to be able to oppose regulation on DeFi uh, after four years when Bitcoin's been around for 10 years and Ethereum's been around <clears throat> for, you know, a little bit over seven years. I just, I, I, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't understand how they would be able to come to that, you know, and almost in a, in a sense, this is me talking, vibing, doesn't have anything to do with ABC, but um, it's almost like, I always say this, it's almost like they're taking XRP, um, taking everything about it to prove that it is a form of security um, and then almost using it as the protocol or the standard going forward. Uh, and, and, you know, this is one of these things I'm gonna we're gonna keep watching. I don't think you know, even though 450 million dollars is a lot of money, uh, when it comes to market markets and and uh, manipulation of the market, it's still a small amount of money. I mean, we're talking three, uh, you know, Apple's Tesla stock or Apple stock. Apple stock has been uh, in the red for a, a, a large amount of time. Um, but they're also one of the top 10, uh, market caps in, in total, uh, asset. I mean, in total market cap in all of, uh, this, the stock exchange. So, um, it, it, I think it, we got to always think about macro, but something like this time situation, man, I think that people have macro expectations when we should have been looking through a microscope. You just don't look for a thousand time projects anymore. It's not. It's not, not doable. Yeah, not, not, only, not only, yeah, you just, I mean, what What was time token? Like, I just. I, re I read a million. little bit on it. What, just, what is it? So. Out of time. So what is the point of Wonderland? Our goal is to be a policy controlled currency system native on the AVEX, or AVEX network in which the behavior of the time token. In the long term, we believe the system could be used to optimize for stability and consistency so that time can function as a global unit of account and medium of exchange currency in the short term. Okay, look, it's first first thing that you read lets us know it was a problem. It was their policy controlled, uh, what, was the, what was the finish of that? You said that uh, their policy controlled network or was it a policy controlled uh, trans, uh, to be a policy controlled currency system so they they talk to themselves about being multi -C. a DAO. yeah um, multi but they didn't traditionally have a DAO. it wasn't a government no, it, it wasn't but they wanted government. to move towards they, a DAO. exactly but they had a multi-seek function and that's what allowed it these people to do malicious behavior and they're not really giving a real good uh feeling about what they're doing like they're staking while their staking was the that was a joke like the the high percentage rate of that time was just incredible and like why people fell for it is beyond me like i just i in my brain like i heard about it and i heard these influencers talking about it but i was like why why are you pushing this to people for people to fail like 
in the end, I had that feeling already hearing about it because it's just so unrealistic. And then you learn about AMM mining and stuff like that and how percentages work and stuff. And they're saying a thousand percent. They're draining that account so fast somehow or well, taking Scott, this, or doing something to take that this, money. This started off as an Elon tweet. Okay, no, Let's always remember that. It was based off a of hype in a DeFi sector. He tweeted yeah. wild times, and that's when time took off and 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 had its run. So yeah. um, it's, it's just going to be one of those things we keep our eye on. But guys, we appreciate you guys tuning in with us on the uh, on our, our daily, uh, I mean, excuse me, on our crypto vibes, our club vibes here. Um, and, and we'll we'll host these probably once a week, like we've been able to do, uh, just kind of like some freestyle sec- of, uh, sectors of what we look at in our news articles. Um, but before we get out of here, Scott, you want to leave the people with anything today? Just really look into the people you're getting involved with. I don't suggest working with an undoxed team. Learn who the people well, what are. What is doxed in what is before we get out? What is doxed anymore? People change their name. Well, and it could be it. fake. It could be somebody paid. Like there's so many things. You just got to know what you're getting yourself into. That's the end thing. But yeah. yeah, I think what you just said right there is important. Guys, get in things that you believe in and not the next fad. Right? Let's just let's let's go back to doing our due diligence and sticking with the things that we know. And um, live videos with actual CEOs and, and know who these people are. Yeah, for sure. All right. And thank you for tuning in, you guys. We really appreciate you taking the time to listen to us. Yeah. Until next time, guys. Peace out. See you guys later. Bye. Oh, uh, wait one second. <laughs>